Hi, and welcome to the Epic Slideshow After Effects template customization video. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to go over how to replace your placeholders with your photos or your videos. I'm going to show you how to replace text and introduce you to the controls for the global controls for the colors and the photo frames and the controls for the text. So as you can see, we have our render comp open and in this timeline, we have all of our scenes laid out and each scene animates groups of 10. So if you don't have exactly 50 photos, uh, you don't have to use all of the scenes. Uh, you can just delete or remove um, any of these scenes that you like and re-edit the timeline however you wish. So if we take a really quick look, we have the opening scene, which is open right now. Then we have photo scenes uh, 1 through 50. And then our closing logo scene is where you'll replace your closing logo and your text. We have uh, some other like color correction and lighting layers here. We have a fade to black layer uh, that fades on and fades off at the beginning and end. You can move those around or remove those if you like. And our first layer up here is called global controls. And in this effects controls panel, let me extend this, we have a checkbox to show the numbers on each photo. So if you're editing the photo, I'm sorry, if you're editing the template, and you're scrubbing through the timeline and you decide you want to change one of the photos, uh, instead of trying to figure out which one it is, you can just go to the show photo numbers in the effects controls panel uh, right here and you can check this box to either turn that off or turn it on. So you can see which placeholder you're looking at at any given point. We also have a checkbox to turn off the borders on all the photos. So if you check that box, that will turn those borders off. If you want it on, you can check that box again. You can change the border colors globally as well. You can also change the text background color by choosing this color picker and choosing your color. You can also change the color of the background for the entire animation. So if you wanted a, a different colored background, you can absolutely do that. So if you go to our project panel, you'll see that our project is organized into folders. We have our elements folder and this contains all of our source files in pre-comps. We have our render comp and that's just uh, the timeline that the rent the comp that you want to render. And then there's the replace images here folder. And this is subdivided into each scene. So we can photo scene one, you have replace photos one through 10. The next folder is replace text here folder. And this has all of the text placeholders. Uh, you would just open double click to open that up and then double click any of the text layers and you can type your text once this is highlighted. And as you can see, this text layer has some animation on it, so you don't want to delete this text layer or else you'll lose that um, animation that's applied to it. So just type your text in there. And then if you want to change that text background uh, or make it smaller or change the size, first what you'll want to do is move your text. We're going to move this down here and then select your text background layer and then just grab these points and change the size this way. There we go. And if we go back to the project panel and scroll down, there's a comp to replace the logo. If you double click on that, this is the composition where you'll replace your logo for the closing scene. And uh, there's a placeholder layers here, you can delete those or turn them off. And this is where you would uh, import your logo and then drag it into this composition. And we'll do that uh, a little later. So let's replace our first image. If we go to the replace images here folder and open the photo scene 01 folder and double click to open the replace photo 01 composition, there is a placeholder here. You can delete it or turn it off. It's a good idea to keep the photo number layer uh, turned on so that way you can always you know go back and uh, check that checkbox so you can see which photo you're looking at and um, before you render you'll want to turn this checkbox off uncheck that uh, unless you want to see the photo numbers so if you go back to a replace photo composition you can delete this placeholder or turn it off we'll just turn it off for now and to import files you can go to file 
where is it? There you go, import file. And then navigate to the folder where you have all of your photos. Select your layer, click open. Then in the project panel, select your image and just drag it into this timeline. You'll see that this is a little too big. So if we twirl down to our transform properties and we're going to scrub to the left on that scale property and just scale that down. We can move this photo around too in the comp viewer. Just select it and drag it around. Get it to where you like it. And if we go back to the render comp, go to photo number one, you'll see that our image has been replaced and our text replaced as well. So let's go to the replace photo number two composition, double click to open that up. And let's put a video in here and I'll show you how that works. Uh, to another way to import files is to just double click in an empty space in the project panel and that will open up our import file uh, pop-up menu and we can select a video, click open. And again, you can drag that file into your timeline. And to edit this, you can move your layer forward or backwards, whichever way you like. We'll start about right there. If we go to our render comp, we can double click to open the photo scene 01 through 10. Double click on that. We'll scrub through. Here we go, photo number two. And you'll notice that the video is a still frame. But once the camera gets to that placeholder, the video starts. And this is all set up in the grid compositions. So it's usually the last layer in, the, in this uh, timeline. If you double click on that grid layer, we have all of our placeholders and there's a layer marker where it says video starts. And this is where the video will start. Uh, the timing has already been worked out here. So as you can see with photo two, hit you on our keyboard. This is our freeze frame at zero. So it's going to stay there until the camera moves on to that placeholder. Then the video starts, it plays through. And then roughly around four seconds, it's going to stop. And so the video isn't going to play continuously while the camera is moving on to other placeholders. We wanted it to play while the camera is on that placeholder and then stop. So I just wanted to quickly uh, explain how that works in case you had questions about that. So if we go back to the photo scene composition, uh, I wanted to show you one more thing. There are controls for the text layers or the text animation that's happening here on each of these photos. Those are optional. So let's go to the effects controls panel and I'll show you how they work. The first control we have is to turn, just simply turn the text on or off. So if we check this checkbox or uncheck it, you'll see that our text disappears. You can always check that to turn it back on. You can move the position either left, right, up or down. You can control the size. You can make that text layer bigger or smaller if you like. And if you want to rotate it, you can do that here with this angle control. Each photo or each placeholder has its own text layer. So you can turn those on or turn those off. You can control those however you like. So that's pretty much it for this template. Uh, we'll go over the closing logo scene uh, right now, but for the rest of the placeholders, really all you do is just open up their timelines, drag and drop in your photo or your video, and replace your text in the text placeholders. So last but not least, let's go to the closing logo scene composition. So we'll click to open that. And if you recall, the plate replace logo here composition is in the replace text folder. And if you can't find it, you can always just do a search for it. Just type logo and you'll see the replace logo here, timeline, composition, open that up. Then you can import your logo and click open. Then you can drag that layer into your timeline and you can turn off these layers or delete them. We're going to select this, move it where we want it to be. Now you'll notice that 
I have two versions of my logo. There's one without a background, there's one with a background. So we have the one with the background and go to the closing logo scene. You'll see that it's updated, but it's a little too big. We'll go back to the logo comp. Make that a bit smaller, move that over. Back to the logo scene, just a little bit more. There we go. That's about what it looks like uh, if you have a logo with a solid background. If you don't, you can go back to your replace logo here, timeline. Then we're gonna choose this one without a background. I'm going to use my mask tools to mask that out. So a quick way to create a solid layer behind this logo that doesn't have a background, you can just double click on, well, don't have any layers selected, and click twice on the rectangle tool, just click twice, and that will create a shape layer. You wanna drag that to the bottom of this layer stack. And then if we go back to the closing logo scene, you'll see your logo has been updated and now you have a solid background. Uh, back to the replace logo here, composition. With this shape layer selected, you can always go up here to the fill color options and you can change the color here with the color picker. So thanks for watching the customization tutorial. If you have any questions at all, feel free to email me, marissa at fluxvfx.com. Um, I'm always here to help and answer your questions. Thanks a lot.